Hello, 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 everybody. This is Penny the Angelic Sweetheart here, and welcome back to PPP. And so today, I have a special guest with me. And who is it, you ask? Well, please give a warm and friendly welcome to the one and only Spooky the Ghost. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Paranormal Penny Podcast number three. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, uh, today we are going to be interviewing you, Spooky, and I have some questions here that would like to ask you that I typed down since I, well, it took less time to type it out, so, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, question number one, who are you? Well, <laughs> and by who are you, I mean... Like, I could have phrased it a different way, but I decided, okay, who are you? <laughs> but anyway, like, go ahead and tell everybody about yourself, especially to those who are watching this podcast right now who don't know who you are, never heard of you. So go ahead and tell them a little bit about yourself. Okay. Hi there. My name is Spooky, and I am a ghost, and I love to scare people, and I especially like to pull some other pranks, but I mostly scare people because I want to. So, yeah. And I have my very own video games. Well, yeah. <laughs> what is it, Spooky? Well, it's just, I was thinking about, you know, my first game, you know, House of Jump Scares being changed to Jump Scare Mansion. I still don't like it to this day. I liked it better when it was house of jump scares. It makes a lot more sense than it being a mansion. So you don't like it being a mansion? Well, I guess maybe they're not too far from the truth about it being a mansion because, you know, it has a thousand rooms. Just like I wanted it to, but still. I'd rather it, you know, be house of jump scares because it seems more like haunted housey, you know? I guess that makes sense. So, uh... <laughs> Yeah, and the second question is, well, what are your hobbies? And you clearly just said that you love to scare people. <laughs> yes, I do. I love to scare people. Yeah, but other than that, what else do you like to do? Uh, there isn't very many things I like to do besides that. And if there is, I like to read poetry by my favorite author. Really? Yes, really. Okay. Um, let me see. Did I type in this question? Nope, I did not. Okay, well, let's ask a question that's outside of the ones that I came up with. Um, since you, uh, said you like to read poetry or like to, besides, you know, scaring everyone. What poetry? Like, what kind of poetry? It's by the author, Edgar Allan Poe. He's my favorite. And my most favorite out of all of the poems that he's written is The Mosque of the Red Death. He even dressed up as that for Halloween a long time ago. Oh, yeah, of course, Edgar Allan Poe. I forgot. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> but what about The Raven? Have you ever heard of the Raven? Of course. I told you, I'm a big fan of Edgar Allan Poe. But as dark and creepy and cool as the Raven poem is, I still prefer the Mosque of the Red Death. Yeah, you still look so cute in that costume. You know, as a Grim Reaper and... Oh, I mean, you look so fierce in that red Grim Reaper costume. So fierce, so scary that you could scare anybody. Thank you. Yes. Okay, now that's out of the way. Now let's go to these questions. What year were you born? Huh? I said, what year were you born? You know, like, do you want to tell us what year were you born, Spooky? Uh, honestly, I can't remember. Huh? You don't remember what year you were born? Mm-mm. Honestly, everything was kind of blurry since, you know, I became a ghost and all. So, uh, the year I was born is pretty much not one of the memories that are 
with me at this moment, so, uh, yeah, I can't remember what year I was born, so forgive me. No, 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 that's okay. It's understandable for a mortal soul to lose their memories after death. <laughs> okay, uh, but do you remember where you were born? No, that's one of the memories that escaped me. Okay, then never mind those questions. Oh! Okay, how old are you? How old am I? Yeah, how old are you? Uh, that would be a little something called none your business. Because I don't really reveal my age to anyone. The only people who are allowed to know how old I really am is me, myself, and I. And that's it. No one else is allowed to know how old I am. Period. Okay, okay. Sorry for asking. So, um, I wrote another question that kind of rephrases that a little bit. So, um, could you at least tell us how old you were before you died, if you don't mind answering that? Uh, uh, let's see, uh, let me think. How old? Hmm. I think I was, uh, about 11, 12 years old? No, no! I remember now, I was 12 years old when I was alive. 12 years old. 12 years old? Oh. Wow, <laughs> you were almost a teenager. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so you were 12 years old when you were alive. Are you certain? Yes, I'm certain. I said I remember. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so, and this is an another uh, question that I hope you don't mind answering. What was your life like when you were alive? Um, I can't say it was that great. You know, because I was ridiculed, made fun of for being cute, even though I wanted to be scary and everything. And I think I remember people making fun of my name because my name's Spooky, and it's actually not a normal name for a person. So I can't say that my life was that great when I was alive because of all the bullying and everything. Okay, and... What were your parents like? Do you remember? Parents? Um, I remember that my father loved me, but I don't remember my mother very much. Oh, like, how come you don't remember your mother? Like, was she not there for you when you were a child? Um, I think she was, but then again, my memories aren't that great, seriously. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I won't press on you with that again if you know what I mean. Anyway, next question. Do you like video games? Oh, I love video games! I freaking can't, uh, well, I can't say live because I'm already dead, but I freaking, um, unlive for them, if, if you know what I mean. I think I understand what you mean, Spooky. Okay, and what kind of video games do you like? I like go-kart games, and I especially like Pac-Man. Pac-Man? Pac-Man. Oh. Uh... Yeah, Pac-Man. So, uh... What other games do you like? Um... I like games where people can kill people. Especially my own game. You know, called... Uh... Is it Mrs. Spook? I can't remember. But it's with me stabbing everyone. Spook, I thought I told you not to go there, especially in this podcast. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I guess old habits die hard. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Have you ever heard of Bendy? Yes. Oh my goodness. I love Bendy. He and I are like best buds. He shares my love for pranking. I mostly like to do scare pranks, but, um, other pranks that he recommends, you know, doing together some other time is kind of fun, too. But I still prefer the fear. Right, so I'm guessing he hasn't been a good influence on you? What do you mean? You know, like, Spooky, I'm trying to get you to behave. You know, learn that your actions have consequences and everything, and I don't think Bendy is being a good influence on you. 
What do you know about good influence? And besides, it's in my nature to prank. Bendy says that all the time, even though he's a demon. But you're a ghost, you know? So what? Besides, I love to scare people, and you can't stop me from doing so. Okay, okay, I know, I can't stop you from scaring people. But there's a difference between scaring people and hurting them, you know? I haven't hurt anyone. Seriously, not since I met you. Really, I haven't hurt anybody. Okay, I know you haven't hurt anyone this far, and I'm really proud of you for that, Spook. But still, you need to think before you do, you know? And I'm not saying don't hang out with Bendy at all, but just don't freaking just think about how the other peop how the other person, excuse me, is feeling or is gonna feel before you pull any pranks, such as scare pranks, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'll try. Never did that before. Well, that's what's called. I mean. That's what it means to be considerate, hun. Okay. And you said you liked Bendy, right? Well, yeah. I just said we're like best buds. Right. Okay. So, that's all the questions I got for now. So tell me, Spook, like, have you ever heard of this game called Dark Deception? Dark to what? Dark Deception. You know? Uh-uh. Never heard of it. Well, Dark Deception is a horror game about, you know... This person did a lot of bad things in life and wants to right the wrong he's done through death by going through different nightmare portals and everything like that. Oh! Uh... Hmm. Huh. Never heard of that. So, um... What... These nightmare portals, like, um... What exactly are on the other side of them? A lot of monstrosities that you probably don't want to come in contact with if... Well... You just don't want to come in contact with it all because they'll kill you, you know? What are they? Tell me! I'm curious! Okay, um... Well, the first chapter, there's... Um... What are they called again? Oh, that's right! Um, the first chapter is called Monkey Business. <laughs> Monkey Business, that's funny. Monkey Business. <laughs> Um, it's literally called that because <laughs> monkey business is what, um, I mean, excuse me, wow. Um, it's called that because the monsters are literally demon monkeys known as murder monkeys. Oh, murder monkeys. Okay, so are they called that because they kill? Mm-hmm. Wow, huh. kind of sounds like me. <laughs> yeah, except, uh... The point of this game is that you need to collect soul shards in order to get bits and pieces of a magic ring that's supposed to grant your every freaking desire or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, my desire is to be as scary as possible and to not be called cute. Nope, not ever again. Just like you called me cute earlier. But I just apologized to you and that was a mistake. I forgot for a split second that you don't like being called cute, Spooky. That's not a big deal. Maybe not to you, but it's a big deal to me. Okay, well, back to Dark Deception. Okay, yeah, these murder monkeys will get you if you either get too close to them or if you don't run away from them. And there's also a red soul shard that reveals where the enemies are. And there's also a little sphere that can stun the enemies for, like, a split time and everything. I mean, yeah, split amount of time. Stun him how? Well, it just says, like, you know, enemy stunned, and it just lasts for, like, a short time. Oh. Huh. Hmm. This game sounds interesting. So, um, these murder monkeys, like, do, uh, can they come out of the portals? Not that I know of. Like, I don't think they can come out of the portals of their world. Like, I really hope that's not the case, because... I think that would be pretty messed up, especially for the players. Okay. And what other monsters are in that game? Um, well, the monsters that are in that game, like the second one that you encounter, is that of, well, looks like a demon little girl. 
but I think maybe she's the soul of a girl that's like, you know, uh, uh, no, no, no. Okay, you know what? They're probably just theories or something like that, but based on the theories, they're, it, she's probably the soul of a little girl that was murdered and she is consumed by anger and hatred or anger and sadness excuse me and she likes to torment her uh, um victims yes that's right she likes to torment her victims or no 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 i got that right she likes to torment and toy with her victims i got that right kind of sounds like me especially when it comes to the players you know playing my game and everything <laughs> yeah but she looks nothing like you She's not a ghost, she's a demon in there, and she recently got her very own boss fight, so did the murder monkeys. What? But I already thought they had their boss fights, you know. Um, well, no, it's mostly just running away from them. Like, the only two chapters that had bosses in them were, were like, in chapter three, there was, like, where you go into a, um... What do you call it? A sewer. That's right. You go into a sewer and... Ew, a sewer? That's disgusting. Why would you want to go down there for? Well, that's what's in that level, okay? Anyway, you go into a sewer. And, of course, there's nasty water, just like in any other ordinary sewer. But the monsters down there are called dread duckies. Dread duckies? Like, as in, you know, like, spooky-looking ducks or something? Yes. Yeah. And they kind of look like, you know, your sort of, like, creepy version of a rubber ducky that you have in your bathtub. Except the creepy part is, is that, well, and also the most dangerous part is not all of them are, you know, this harmless floating ducky in the middle of the sewer or in the middle of the halls in the sewer floating on the water. Some of them are alive and will freaking kill you if you get caught by them. How would they kill you? Well, they could stomp on you, stun you, and pretty much bite your head off. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. Huh. Well, that's, uh, that's dark. That's kind of surprising sounding from you. I mean, coming from you. You know, spook. <laughs> so the dead duckies have a boss in their uh, level? Yes, they do. And it's called the... Ah, frick, I forgot what it's called, but it's a giant freaking duck that can freaking swallow you whole if you let it get you. And everything. <laughs> and the other level of the game that's in, like, chapter three... Yeah, chapter three in the game or of the game, excuse me, is, you know, it's called Carnival. Carnival? Like, as in, you know, like, clowns and stuff like that? Mm-hmm, they're clown gremlins. And if you, and if those people have a fear of clowns, then they're in for a freaking challenge and trying to freaking, um, beat that. <laughs> oh, well, I've never really been, uh, scared of clowns. If anything... They could be a nice, fine specimen. Spooky. What? I'm just saying. You better not be collecting specimens. Especially behind my back. I told you. I'm not. I'm not. Please. Okay, okay. All right. Um, so, yeah. That has a boss in that level, too. Well, multiple bosses in that level. So, what are the previous levels that didn't have bosses? Well, monkey business didn't have a boss, and the boss is like a sh chef monkey with, like, um, pizza cutters for <laughs> arms. Oh! Well, uh, let's just hope that they don't end up, like, you know, sliced into ribbons, you know, if they were to play it. <laughs> yeah. They now have that 
in that level as a boss, but I think it's probably the easiest boss because it's like avoiding the boss, you know? Like you're trying to get to the ring altar before it gets you sort of thing. Yeah. And the second one with this demon girl, Ag Agatha, it's kind of avoiding her too, but she also can creates uh, fake portals in a room that she traps us in before um, the doors are open for us to escape and everything. So uh, and if you run to those portals, I'm guessing it'll cause explosions and stuff like that. I'm guessing. I don't know, but maybe that's what they do. Okay. And this next stage that also didn't have a boss fight before, it's called, um, Deadly Decadence. And these enemies called the Gold Watchers, which, oh my gosh, I think are the scariest enemies in that game. How are they the scariest? Well, they're the scariest because it's basically like you're playing a game of red light, green light with them. Because if you take your eyes off them too long, they'll uh, move, and uh, if you get too close to them, they'll get you. And if you take your, like I said, if you get, if you take your eyes off of them for too long, and you just stay still, then they'll get you that way too. Ah! Um, I think I remember hearing about something like that, not the game itself, or the Gold Watcher stage, like you mentioned, but I think I remember hearing a monster similar to that type of behavior that these so-called Gold Watchers do, or, yeah, <laughs> I think I remember hearing it somewhere, I can't remember where. Oh, I see, so I guess you know what I mean then. Of course I know what you mean. I mean, it was fun playing red light, green light, you know, and you just don't move once the player looks back at you. So, uh, yeah, except it's this version is a lot more deadly, and like you said, they'll get you if you take your eyes off them for too long. And you also kind of have to keep moving. Like, you can't, like, uh, um, you can't stand still, if you know what I mean. Like, if you stand still for too long, you'll, uh, get caught, and you also gotta be aware of traps, because there's, like, tons of traps in that chapter and in, um, uh, Stranger Sewers, which is also the Dread Ducky stage. Oh, traps! <laughs> yeah, I have some traps of my own that I, I probably set up in my, uh, uh, home. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. It's been a while. Anyways, that's all I'm going to tell you about Dark Deception. You're going to have to check that out for yourself. Aww. But that's okay. Anyway, what other, um, what do you want to talk about next? Like, what is it that you want to talk about, Spooky? Um, we can talk about, you know, uh, torture devices? Or, uh... Maybe, uh, killers or something like that? Spooky. What? I'm only talking about, you know, torture devices that have been used, like, throughout, you know, history and everything like that. That's all I'm saying. I, uh, you weren't actually going to use those torture devices on other victims, or you weren't planning on doing it, were you? No. Spooky. Okay, fine. Um, I was, but then I thought of getting it as a decoration. Yes, a decoration. Not to use on them anymore, I swear. I promise. I really hope you're not lying. Anyway, okay, we'll talk about those devices. But I need to do a little bit of research. Well, the first one we can talk about is the Iron Maiden. The Iron... Oh, the Iron Maiden, of course! Yes, the Iron Maiden! So, uh, what do you know about the Iron Maiden, Spooky? Well, all I know is that it's some kind of tomb, or coffin, whatever you call it, that has spikes in it, and if you were to close the door on that person, the spikes would go right through them, and they would bleed a painful... I mean, they would die a painful and a miserable, horrible death, and basically bleed to death. Well, inside of that Iron Maiden, you know? That's all I know about it. Okay. And... Okay. 
Now let me do a little research on this. Torture devices you oops used through throughout history. <clears throat> okay. Now, is there any other torture devices that you know of, Spooky, that you wanna talk about? Um no. I can't think of anything, but have you, uh, pulled up, uh, something that you could look at? Yes, I have. And this first torture device that has been used, I'm thinking probably through the medieval times, is called... The Rack. And the vic- And the victims, it's where- It's a type of torture where, uh, I'm thinking that- Well, no. Okay, read the description, Penny. The victim's ankles would be strapped to one end of the device and his wrists to the other, a mechanism that was then cranked during the interrogation process, stretching the victim's limbs. Bones and li ligaments ma made star startling sounds as the victim's joints were dislocated until either confessed or was torn apart. Oh, so it kind of basically a torture device of where they used to rip their limbs apart? Well, yeah, but I think it was mostly just to get whoever it was to talk, if it was a criminal or something. Anyway, um, the second one that, um, was used, which is in ancient Rome, was called the Judas Cradle. Judas Cradle? I never heard of that. What is that? Um, okay. A victim was strapped into restraints, lowered upon a chair with a pyramid shaped with a seat. Plank. Da, 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 la, 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 la. Oh, I remember this. Okay, um, Spooky, I don't know if you're old enough to know about this or anything. Seriously? I am too old enough to know about this stuff. I may have been only 12 years old when I died, but still. That was a long time ago. Long time ago. I'm old enough now. Are you sure you want to know what this torture device is used for? Yes. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay, okay. All right. <clears throat> Oops, I got the wrong thing up. Basically, the Judas Cradle is a seat shaped like a pyramid, and the tip of the pyramid is where who at the prisoner would sit on. The tip? You mean the point? Mm-hmm. Oh, why would they make him sit on that? It would, well... <laughs> it was probably because they, if I remember correctly, they committed sex crimes, like rape or homosexuality, that sort of, th sort of thing. Seriously? Wow. Okay. Now that is new. Very new to me. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And an ancient Greek... I mean... Ooh, I remember this one. What is it? Tell me! Tell me! <laughs> okay, okay. Um, this one's called the Brazen Bull. Brazen Bull? I think I heard of that from somewhere, but I can't remember where I heard of it, so go ahead and explain. Okay, so the brazen bull was used in ancient Greece, and they used this for putting a victim inside of an iron bull, and they would set it on fire and have the person basically burn to death inside of it. Oh, I can imagine how painful it must be, you know, burning to death and everything. Though I never thought of burning someone to death. Uh, Spooky. What? What? I'm just saying, I never thought of doing that, and it's not like I'm really gonna do it. Really. <laughs> I really hope that you don't mean that. Anyways. Okay, Heretic's Fork. Okay, this one was in uh, medieval Spain. So yeah, this was in the medieval era, and this was used to engrave, I mean, by prolonged both ends, simple device, 
wedged painfully between the breastbone and the throat. Okay, the victim was unable to walk or fall asleep, and delirium usually led to a confession. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I don't know about this one, Spooky. This one is brutal, and I remember this. <laughs> tell me. Tell me. I have to know. I have to know! I don't know if you can handle it. It's brutal. If you don't know me by now, hardly anything faces me anymore. Especially when it comes to, you know, murder and everything. Just tell me already! Ugh, okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. So this torture method that was used, I don't even know if it's still being used today, but it's called rat torture. Rat torture? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't get it. Like, do they torture the rat, or...? Mm-mm. The rat is used to torture someone. Making him eat it so they can catch diseases? No, it's even worse. Okay, what they do is they take a live rat and they put it on the victim's stomach they put a bucket over it or strap a bucket down so it has no other way out and then they put fire or maybe hot coal over it until it was way too freaking hot for the victim i mean for the rat and its only escape is through the victim's stomach what Mm-hmm. They basically chewed the victim's stomach and burrowed inside of their... Ugh. Uh. Oh my gosh, I got the heebie-jeebies. Uh, my stomach just turned. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna admit this, and it's weird sounding for me. That is very gross and messed up. Wow, that is shocking hearing from you. Okay, and scaphs, I can't pronounce it. It was used in ancient Persia. Okay, death is being eaten alive, literally. Huh? The victim was placed on a hollow tree trunk or boat and force-fed a mixture of milk and honey until he developed diarrhea. After that, he was unclothed and covered in more milk and honey. He was then left to sit in his own waist as insects came to feed on him. <laughs> okay, I've had enough. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I requested that. No, it's okay, Spooky. It's okay. Um, so, uh... So yeah, we're gonna, um, close off with this. Sorry, this is kind of a short podcast. And I'm kind of grossed out now after reading those torture methods. That's so gross. Uh. But thank you so much for being here, Spooky. And thanks for letting me interview you for this podcast. You're welcome. And it was an honor to be here, honestly. And I was pretty bored. Nothing else to do. <laughs> okay. So if you liked this podcast, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and follow my other social medias, and I will see you all next time. Okay? Stay creative. Bye!